Good day, everybody, and welcome to the Day in the Life series. My name is Bob McGoy, an application engineer here at Computer and Technology. This is Season 1, Episode 5 of the Day in the Life series on Change Action. Hopefully, you were able to tune in to Episode 4, where Nick Sweeney led us through issue management. So before we hop into the platform, I'd like to share with you a couple things. We're going to go through some change management terms, then we're going to go through how do we use change action, and where do we start? In the previous episode, Nick showed that issues can be generated by anyone at any time on any aspect of the platform, be that process, be that CAD, or be that documentation. If you have an official change board, they would take that identified issue and evaluate it not only for its merit for the mechanical aspects of the change, but the financial impact it has on the company. Not everyone does an official change board, so it may not be part of your process today, but it can be incorporated later on. Once a change request has been evaluated, then it can be sent to a change order, which is then governed by a change manager or a change coordinator. He is in charge to make sure that all changes in the company are enacted. If you're using change orders, there's a number of changes that can come out of that order, which will result in multiple change actions on your CAD models or your documentation. If you're not using any of this process, you can skip issues, change requests, and change orders and go directly to change actions, allowing you to document the changes that are proposed for your CAD models and turn those into realized changes that are then released for everyone else to use. So to restate that, a large majority of our users don't have a formal change board or a change coordinator, so they don't use change orders or change requests, but they do use issues and change actions. You can use issues and change actions together, or you can use just change actions. Let's go ahead and hop over to the platform and take a look how we do that. So here we are in my dashboard that has my change actions in my issue management. I'm going to go over and manually create a change action. By hitting the plus sign, I can go in and create a new change action. Give it a title and a description, along with a severity and a due date, and I can tell my people to start working. Now that we've created a change action we can use, let's hop over to SOLIDWORKS and open up a model to work on. So in this scenario, we're not preloading the change action. We're going to grab a file that we need to work on and we're going to document that change. So this is a file Kyle asked me to work on earlier. Told me that it needed more teeth in it, in the design. Unfortunately, the way this one was designed, I'm going to have to do some rework, so I really want to document it. So I'm going to request a new version, tell it the reason for that new version, and go ahead and ask for a new revision to be generated. Now that I've asked for a new revision of that part, I'm going to ask the platform to switch out A1 for B1. Now that I've got B1 loaded, as you can see in the status bar there on the right hand side of the task pane, I am then going to go to my hard hat and tell it that I want to work under a specific change action. So all the changes I make are going to be recorded underneath that change action document. I'll select the change action we just generated and click OK. Now with a little magic of television here, I'm going to go ahead and reverse engineer the, the teeth profile that I need to actually add more teeth to this. And then we're going to go in, save that up to the platform and change its maturity status to frozen 
because that's what you do when you're done with the change action. I'm gonna right click here. You can go ahead and save that. Use this as a great learning opportunity. It's telling me that I need to check out the file before I save it. Duh, I need to have ownership of that. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna reserve that, then save it and ask it to unreserve when I'm done. So now my changes have been committed. Now I need to go in and set this from an in work file to a frozen file for the approver to evaluate. So I right click, go to my maturity graph, and then I will set that to frozen so no one else can get to it except for the approver. Now, if I'm not the approver, my job is done. Now the approver comes in and looks at the realized changes. You can see there, B1, they're in frozen. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to in approval state. So someone needs to approve it. And when we're done, you'll see in the upper right hand corner, a thumbs up or a thumbs down UI ad will show up for us to either approve or disapprove that actual change action. Here, I'll go ahead and approve that. Tell them why, why I think that. And go ahead and set OK to that. The platform informs me that things have automatically transitioned. I will refresh the change action so we can look at that. And you can see that B1 is now set from frozen to release. So the great thing about the change action is doing all those things for you behind the scenes automatically. It's approving it, releasing it, and moving it to the next step, which is great. It also documents the changes that we've done. If you're using issues, you can preload a change action by grabbing an issue, going to the change action button from the toolbar and selecting create change action from the issue. That applies the in context and the proposed changes directly into the change action for you. So when you open your change action, you already have your documents assigned.